Reimagining Success, episode 223. You're listening to the Reimagining Success podcast, where we help you design a business and a life that allows you freedom from the nine to five. I'm your host, Anna Lundberg, ex-corporate good girl, now a business mentor and coach, author, mum of two, and I'm here to help you create more freedom, flexibility, and fulfillment. Now let's get started with redefining success outside of the nine to five. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this month's Escape in the 9 to 5 interview on the Reimagining Success podcast. And I'm here with Anna Conchar. And Anna, why don't you dive straight in and tell us what were you doing before and what are you doing now? Sure. Well, thank you for having me. I'm excited to chat today. So my story is actually very similar to yours, Anna, and that is that I worked in marketing And I worked on the agency side. I started that right after college. And after working for a few years, I decided that my entire life goal was to be a CPG brand manager. (laughs) Of course. That was my goal too, of course. Yeah. (laughs) And in order to do that, I needed to go back to school. So I went back to school. I got my MBA. I was like on the fast track to getting that CPG brand manager job. I had an an internship during my MBA program with a CPG brand. Within like three weeks, I was like, this is not what I want. I went to school. This I thought this is what I wanted. And I realized I hated the corporate world. Like it was meeting after meeting. I was one of, you know, 10,000 employees. It was just not what I was thinking. It was not as sexy as it looks mm-hmm. in the movies, right? Um, and also during that internship, I my dad passed away unexpectedly mm-hmm. in the middle of that summer. And these two things really made me kind of take a step back and ask myself what I really wanted. Because I think whenever you have someone close to you die or you have something unexpected happen in your life, it really is a time of reflection and figuring out, you know, what is it that you want instead of being on kind of autopilot, which I think a lot of us are. We're just doing the same thing every Mm. day. And we're, you know, we're just like, this is what's comfortable. So I went back to my grad school program I had no idea what I was going to do when I graduated. Uh, I just knew I wanted to not sell crap to people, you know. (laughs) Uh, Didn't want to be selling toilet paper as my life goal. Um, And I ended up going into politics, actually, Um, which is very interesting. I was literally working 24-7 During the 2016 election, I worked on over 50 different like gubernatorial races, um, lots of different, lots of different races, uh, which was interesting. And it was a great learning experience because it gave me my first look into digital advertising. So that is where I learned Facebook and Instagram ads, Google search ads, YouTube ads, email marketing, lead generation, all these things. And it was amazing from a learning experience, but I realized also that I like marketing. I don't love politics, right? And also politics, it doesn't matter which side you're on or whatever side you choose. It's all a bunch of BS. (laughs) So I didn't feel like I was actually contributing that much value like I thought I would be when I started. So realizing this also at this time realizing that i didn't want to work 60 70 hour weeks mm-hmm. forever because at this point my husband and i had been married you know 5 6 ish years and i couldn't imagine doing that and also having a family so i decided that i was going to start a side hustle and it was mainly in the beginning to pay off student loans. So my husband went to law school. I got my MBA. Combined all together, we had over $200,000 in student loan debt. And there was no way I was going to be able to make a change unless we were able to get rid of some of that debt. 
So I started a side hustle running Facebook and Instagram ads for small and local businesses. And within less than two years, I was able to scale that to six figures on the side. I ended up going all in in my business in 2018. Uh, but at the same time, I realized that I didn't want to build an agency which mm. or a consulting firm because that's what I was trying to leave. So I needed to figure out a way to scale without having to have a giant team or take on lots and lots of clients and work all the time. And that's kind of when I was introduced to this whole idea of online courses, memberships, and coaching. So in 2018, I launched um, my first successful course called Advisory Insiders Pro, which basically teaches other people how to run Facebook and Instagram ads Mm -hmm. for small and local businesses. Because what I was finding is when I was working with these businesses, they needed help and they saw the benefit of it, but they didn't have the time to learn it themselves. And it was a very high in demand skill. And even now today, even more than 2018, Uh, so I said, this side hustle was able to change my life. Why don't I teach other people how to do this instead of having to do things like an MLM or start a blog or become an influencer? It was like a legitimate side business. So I've been running that program for over four years. I've helped over 2000 people launch their own side hustles. And now I am at home with, I have two little girls now. I work two days a week. Uh, I have a small team of contractors and I have made over seven figures every year for the last four years. So I basically replaced my one-on-one clients with courses and memberships. And then in the past year, we launched my Powered by Passive Academy program, which is a membership model to teach others how to do what I did, which was take your skills and build it into an online course membership or group coaching program. So you can have the same flexibility, freedom that I have. Mm. Well, goodness, first of all, let's stop there and celebrate because that's incredible. So (laughs) congratulations. Of course, we do hear other stories that aren't so successful. So it's always really great to hear the the positive stories. Yeah, And, And it's interesting to hear the different reflections and 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 so not really pivots as such, but at least kind of reminding yourself of what's important and making sure you're intentionally building what you wanted to build. So yes. obviously going back to your studies, I'm very sorry about your father, that personal yeah. event can have an impact and, and an important one. And, you know, it's so banal almost, but life is short and it is so precious and something like Absolutely. that can can really help to remind you of that in a, in a very unfortunately tragic way. It's interesting that you studied, um, well, I studied politics and then went into marketing. So very <laughs> similar territory. I too well, did not really go yeah. into to that. And it's, you know, it's, it's in- interesting because I always think, because I, you know, selling perfume. So for us, it was like smelly water. It's not a very useful product. 300 products were being launched a year and I had that "Mm, not sure if I'm really contributing to like making the world a better place and no judgment because lots of people and I still admire the people who are doing incredibly well on that career path they're so passionate about it they're so much more talented than I ever was at those things and it's just finding the the thing that that feels meaningful to you right and then of course works with your lifestyle and all these other things. But it is interesting because you can look on at politics and think, wow, it's such a great way to make an impact. And then, as you said, once you get inside yeah. and see how the the recipes are made on the inside of the restaurant, it's not quite as as tempting as, as it was before. I suppose you've, you've kind of danced around it, but, you know, definition of success is something I talk about. And you sort of jokingly said that, you know, oh, it's being a brand manager in the CPG. But I think there is a truth to, there is a certain career path, certainly for us, It's not so much the case now with Gen Z and everyone coming up. They actually have a very different view, I think, even from us. And we're not even that old, are we? Um, But, you know, really thinking of, okay, of course, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to then go and yeah, do an MBA and I'm going to have this career and I'm going to be in there the rest of my life or at least in the same industry. And actually, I think they say now you're going to have four or five careers, not just jobs, but, but, you know, careers and even better, and I'm on the same page as you, you know, working for yourself, having your own business is such a fantastic solution. I guess, how would you define success today? And you don't need to have a perfect pithy sentence. I'm sure you can say it very articulately, but you know, what does that look like for you? There is lots of things that you mentioned that sound hugely successful, but what does it really mean to you personally? Yeah. So I think going back to the beginning and why I got my MBA was because 
that is what kind of I w- felt like I was sold that dream of like you mm. get a job, um, you move up the corporate ladder, and then that's what success is, right? A stable job that provides you know kind of the the safe suburban middle class lifestyle that that you we were sold as kids and our parents were sold I think too and that's what my parents had my mom was an executive she worked all the time my dad actually stayed home and freelanced so I kind of saw both of those worlds uh but that so that's what I thought it was and honestly I went and got my MBA because I wanted to make six figures by the time I was 30 that was my my version of success right mm-hmm. And I thought that that was the easiest path for me to do it and also do it in something that I was interested in, which was marketing. Now, success to me looks totally different. Uh, I could care less about what someone's job title is, who they work for, uh, anything like that. The thing that is successful for me is that, number one, my time. Like that is, I've been very strategic since I started my business that the number one thing that it had to be about was lifestyle. So it Mm -hmm. wasn't about money or even, you know, the making the biggest impact in the entire world. It was truly about like, what is the lifestyle that I want to have? Because life is too short. And so for me, it's owning my time. And now that I have kids really Mm. spending as much time as I can with them and that I like to be with them, but also doing something that I'm really excited and interested in. Like I love going to work, (laughs) (laughs) which my work (laughs) is my office in my house, right? Like I get excited, even though I do spend the majority of my time with my family, I get excited when I get to sit down and talk with other people and brainstorm and come up with new ideas and test those ideas. And it's really the fact that I get to be creative in my work, right? Like when you're in the kind of traditional nine to five corporate job, there's so much red tape. You know, you have this idea and you want to share it with your team or your clients or whoever. And by the time it gets through everyone. It's like not even the idea that you came up with. And it's six months later when you finally get the go ahead to try it. Mm -hmm. So I love that I get to be creative. So really success to me is owning my own time, being able to be creative and really enjoy the work that I'm doing. Also being able to pivot so that when Mm -hmm. my you know, what I enjoy changes or what I'm interested changes, because I ha- own my own business, I can change the business. It's not like I'm stuck in this one way, right? And then, of course, money. So, like, I don't want to have to worry about money, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's a big thing. I think we've all seen it in our lives. I've done a lot of reflection on kind of the money mindset that I was brought up with uh, and really wanting to not have that to be a stressor in my life. And then really just the impact and seeing what I can actually do. Like I love pushing myself to be able to go further, uh, try something new. And that's really what success is for me Mm. is all of those things combined. Um, And it's, I know that it's different for everyone. And that's one of the things that I really like to talk with people who I coach with is that, my what I look like and what I've built in my business is great for me, but you need to build it the way it's going to work for you. And yes, and this is your speaking my language because, of course, right. a lot of people right. say you've got to do a course, you've got to do a webinar. This no, is the yeah. exact format you have to follow, and of course, that's not the case at all. Having said that, I do think the sort of the freedom, autonomy, creative freedom, mm-hmm. flexibility, managing your own time doing interesting work and so on is absolutely common, certainly to all the people I work with and I'm sure all the mm-hmm. people you work with. I do think there are people who have other ambitions and and higher financial goals that put maybe that before lifestyle and so on. But I think, as you said, putting lifestyle first is really still quite new. And unfortunately, I think 
sometimes when you do that, you you assume, speaking of money mindset, that you have to compromise on financials and, oh, yes, mm-hmm. I'm just going to have my little coaching business here and I love doing it. But, you know, oh, I'll just have to accept that I'll not be able to make money. So I think what's really powerful is to hear a success story like this, where you can absolutely have those things. And, um, you know, the the sort of hard work and you're ambitious and you're making a big impact, but you're also able to now work two days a week and manage it alongside your kids and so on. I mean, it sounds like you've navigated this very confidently and seamlessly and so on, but I imagine, I almost hope, that sounds a bit mean, that there are some challenges along the way. So, you know, what what difficulties have you had and how have you overcome those, I suppose, to get to where you are along the way? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there have been lots of challenges. <laughs> you. <laughs> Yes. Uh, it has not been all easy breezy. I will say, so the biggest challenge for me was when I first got started, obviously learning how to find my own clients because Mm. I had come from an agency world, a consulting world where we just had clients and that's Mm. what I worked on. Right. So figuring out even just how to attract my own clients and how to market my own business, which made me deal with a lot of imposter syndrome because my entire profession was advertising and marketing. And here I felt like I had no idea how to market Mm. and advertise my own business and attract my own clients. So that was a really big mindset hurdle. And then once I was able to kind of get beyond that and feel really confident in my ability to land clients. And, you know, I put together all the processes of proposals and packaging and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Then my next big challenge was figuring out how to scale that. Because Mm -hmm. like I said, I did not want to have a big agency. I didn't want to hire a bunch of people, but I also didn't want to what I call like ride the revenue roller coaster, right? Which is like you land a client, you lose Mm. a client, you land two clients, you lose three clients. And it's just like not stable, uh, which is really any business if you're not constantly generating new leads. Uh, But I didn't want to just do one-on-one services. So that was when I went into kind of the courses membership coaching and trying to figure that out. And I probably spent a year listening to literally every f- piece of free content out there, taking literally every free webinar um, from all the big names. And I'm talking about this is like 2015, 2016. Because mm-hmm. again, I was convinced like I'm a marketer. I can figure this out. We'll just read mm-hmm. verse engineer what they're doing. Uh, and then I launched my first membership and two people bought it. <laughs> I was like, so embarrassed, so embarrassed. Um, Mostly because I thought like, this was going to be a huge success the very first time, which I think a lot of us do because we see all the big flashy numbers uh, on the internet. And I actually refunded those two people their money because I was so embarrassed. And I kind of was like, nope, I'm not going to do this. Um, This isn't for me. I'm done. I'm just going to stick with my one-on-one services. Uh, But then about a year later, I decided, no, this is, I really want to make this work. Like this is the key to having the lifestyle that I want, the income that I want, the flexibility that I want and the impact because I kept on seeing the same things coming up with my one-on-one clients that it was like, I just need to put this in a program so that Mm -hmm. I can teach hundreds and thousands of people this instead of just helping these five clients that I have. So that's when I relaunched the course Advisory Insiders Pro that I've been running for four years now. Um, And I had five people buy it, which this time I was ecstatic because I had also worked with one-on-one clients who were course creators and uh, coaches. So I kind of knew, I just knew a lot Mm -hmm. more about what to expect, how to make it better. Um, so that's been, that's probably the biggest challenge is like those failures and then being like, okay, let's try this again. Um, and you know, now I'm even doing that again, where we've had this very successful program. It's amazing, but I want to help people in another way too, which is learning all of these things that I've learned over the last five years growing, you know, a multi-million dollar online business 
and doing it also in a way, again, that is that kind of lifestyle first, because Mm -hmm. I think we do see so much hustle and constant, you know, content creation. Like you feel like you have to be on Instagram every day and you Mm -hmm. need to you know, a YouTube channel and a podcast and TikTok now and whatever the newest, latest, greatest thing is, which doesn't really work if you want the lifestyle of it. So that's where I, you know, I believe that everything in business costs time or money. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, you have time typically, and then you have to get to this point where are you going to spend time or money? And I choose to spend money. So I run Facebook and Instagram ads all the time for my business, attracting people to our programs so that I don't have to rely on beating the algorithm or what is the latest Mm -hmm. trending audio on reels or whatever, because that's just not what I'm into. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I've just had to figure out how to do it my way because there are so many people with different opinions and yeah. Yes. And I think we've all done that thing. And I'm sure many yeah. listeners have too, of, of listening to all the free stuff. And there is so yeah. much available. And in some ways, yeah. you, you don't even really need to pay anyone because there's all the stuff is there, all the knowledge and answers are there. What you don't get is the tailored support, the sounding board, the guidance, the feedback, the coaching, the mentoring, et cetera, right? That's what we're missing from there. But I think yeah. that's that's such a great thing in terms of democratizing, I suppose, but it can also be confusing. I'm reminded of following all sorts of gurus in the beginning when I got very yeah. confused and, and didn't really know what I wanted. But I did want to pick up on before we segue into the business yeah. model, which you kind of danced around already. But the this idea of, as you said, getting those two clients, because I say this, and again, this is an important message to everyone listening. It happened to me too. I did a, a live workshop foolishly because I had no audience. It was literally when I was just starting out. And of course, nobody yeah. would show up to that. Um, one person signed up and I, in the end, had to say, Say, oh, it's a white lie here, but oh, it's fully booked now, I'm afraid, but I'll happily turn it into a one-to-one coaching session for you. Right. So I, which gave her more value, in fact. And mm-hmm. after that, I launched my group program, which absolutely only had a handful of people. But I think it's in a way, in in being so sort of, in a way, selfish and, and embarrassed ourselves, we forget that these are people who've chosen to show up, trust you, invest in you. And whether you help that, you know, treat that one person as if they're the most important person, they'll go around there, they'll be an ambassador for life Mm -hmm. and support you and tell other people. And then next time you might have five people and then next time 10 people and then before you know a multi-million dollar business, right? So I think it is just debunking that idea that you're supposed to get it right the first time. And as you said, if you're used to the big corporate machine, we used to have sales teams and marketing teams and, Mm -hmm. and all this stuff behind you, finance. And as you said, the clients were there. Now right. suddenly you're having to create everything, which which is a whole different ball game. And unfortunately, especially like you, I came from a marketing background thinking, oh, I can do this. <laughs> I certainly don't need to ask for advice. And I, I shouldn't admit that I'm struggling and, and those kinds of a little bit of ego kind of gets in the way, doesn't it? But but so just a reminder, so you've talked about a little bit. So the business model now is you've got the, yeah. t- tell us what the pieces of the puzzle are. Sure. So the business model now uh, is really we have two core offerings. So I basically faded out my one-on-one Facebook and Instagram ads and sales funnel services once I had kids. Uh, Because, you know, as a nursing mom, you have no idea when your kids are going to nurse or nap and trying to do client meetings was very difficult. And also both my kids were pretty much during the pandemic when everything was shut down. Um, So that has phased out. I no longer do one-on-one services. Now I just do courses and memberships. So I have that course that I've talked about a few times, Advisory Insiders Pro, which is a six-week program that is a course that teaches you how to basically build your own Facebook and Instagram ads management business. So, and we do it in a way that you can do it on the side, whether it's you're in a corporate job or you're a student or you're a parent who stays at home and you want something to do during nap time. Uh, that's that what that is all about. So it's a six week course. Uh, and then after that, if you want to continue to have support, we have an alumni program that is a monthly membership model. That course is a little less than $4,000. And then we have a 50% off offer that we give a few times a year. Um, So the typical price is about $2,000 for that program. 
Then we have the other program, which we launched this year called Powered by Passive Academy. This is a monthly membership program specifically to help you turn whatever skills and passions you have into an online course membership or group coaching program. So very similar to what I did, right? Like how do you go from this skill that you have to actually creating something where you can make some passive income from it? And that monthly membership is $297 a month as the basic membership. And then we also have a VIP membership, which really is more kind of the like one-on-one consulting. So we're looking, we're reviewing all of your emails. We're reviewing your sales pages, your webinar, um, everything that goes into really selling your offer. But what makes that program very unique is I there are lots of people on the internet teaching you how to build a course or membership or coaching program, right? The problem is, is that the majority of them are telling you to ask your audience what they want or validate your offer from your audience. And most of us don't have audiences. Like you said, when you started, you, you know, you had this workshop that no one signed up for. I had two people join my program and it's because you have no one to sell to. So when you look at the big names in this industry um, or kind of in the online knowledge-based business space, you can't copy what they're doing because mm. they have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people on their, you know, podcast, listening to their podcasts on their email lists, following them on social that they can literally turn around and sell to like that. And so what our program is really about is using Facebook ads to test your ideas in front of thousands of people, very similar to like what we used to do with focus groups, right? Like, you instead of you ask five people what they thought, well, instead of asking five people, let's ask 5,000 what they think of this. And then using that data and information to build out a product that people actually want and value uh, and, and then learning how to sell it uh, in an automated way. So that's really what we focus on is validating the offer with cold audiences, people who have never heard of you before and learning how to sell to them. Because if you're an average entrepreneur, you don't have that big giant audience to sell to uh, when it comes to, you know, course membership or coaching. Mm. That's interesting. It's always good to hear the different setup. I love the course plus membership kind of mm-hmm. model that that always works well. And then the the kind of program plus VIP is another yeah. the great option. Really interesting point about, the again, the big gurus with the massive platforms, because I see people try to emulate them posting generic inspirational quotes and then thinking they're going to get thousands of people into their courses and, and so on. And you're right, unfortunately, they're too far ahead now. They I've worked with someone, they just don't think they remember what it was like to be right at the beginning. So they say, right. oh, just do this. And then you've obviously got thousands of people, but you don't even have thousands of people to begin with. So I think that's really interesting. And, and it's very different, actually, although consistent, but but different. I don't do a lot of the paid stuff at all. So I guess thinking of now the personal brand, because of course you're here speaking to me, is that mm-hmm. something that you have been doing or something that you're looking to do more now, but bec- become more known as the expert behind the business? Yes. So I will 100% say that prior to this year, I was kind of like, I'm just going to stay over here and hide behind the ads Mm -hmm. and let them do the work for me. And, you know, I, I have that down, like I know how to run ads and I'm a hundred percent confident in it. I've navigated all of the changes in Facebook and Instagram and YouTube for the last, you know, since basically 2012. So I got it (laughs) fully confident in that. But, uh, you know, I, I think that again, kind of, we all start with one, we either start with organic or we kind of, we start with paid. And I'm realizing that if I want to have the impact that I want to have, I have to, you know, build my brand as a person Mm -hmm. too. Uh, and everything that I heard from, you know, my students would be like, Anna, we love getting on coaching calls with you, which that's my favorite thing to do in my business is get to work with, you know, actually having conversations. Um, so yeah, so that is definitely something we're, we're working on now. So I went to my first live conference coaching event this past, uh, summer and 
it was amazing. And it definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone. Like I got up in front of a hundred people and got coached, which you would think, I know I was like, I'm a pretty confident person. I was sweating. Right. Uh, but it, it really was kind of like, okay, if you want to continue to grow, if you want to take the business to the next level, you need to start doing things other than just paid ads. So like we, the minute I got back, I was wrote down, okay, what are the things that need to happen for us to go to the next place in our business? And, but also still do it in a way that aligns with that lifestyle, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's my biggest thing. My biggest thing is I want to grow, but I want to continue to only work two days a week. Uh, so I, you know, we hired a, we have a PR manager now. I've never worked with a PR manager ever. Uh, and, but I would rather someone go out and say, Hey, Anna, we need to get your name out there and this is how we're going to do it. And they do it. Uh, but also we've done things like we restarted our podcast. We're turning our podcast into a YouTube channel. These are all things that to me are long-term plays, Mm -hmm. right? They're not things that we're going to see ROI from immediately. Where like, if I turn on ads, I can tell you in five days, I'm going to get sales. Uh, But I also know from a longevity standpoint from the business, for me as a personal brand, like these are things that I need to practice and get comfortable with and also just start putting myself out there more. So Mm. it's definitely evolving, which that's what I've also learned about business is I think when I started, I thought there was going to be like this end point where it was just like, everything is perfect. I don't have to, we're not changing anything. And what I've learned is that is not the truth at all. It's constantly evolving Mm. because we constantly evolve as people, right? And that's also what makes it fun because then you get to be creative and try new things. So that's what I'm doing quite ex- exhausting, right? And overwhelming because you think, as you say, I'm going to find the one right business model and then that's it. Ta-da, yes. I'm successful. But the world yes. evolves, you evolve. So that's exciting, but it's also a bit, oh, I can't just sit and sort of ride the wave or at least not for very long. But it's interesting, as you said, with with the business that you need to, well, not need to, but you're choosing to, I guess, add a different dimension to it. And I, I'm a big believer in that personal brand, giving you the longevity above and beyond the business as as an expert who could then if you decide not to do the Facebook and Instagram or a different kind of course, you would still bring your credibility with you from that, right? Absolutely. That's so interesting. And I love the language as well of the comfort zone in a way, because even in the success that you have now after all these years in the industry, but also then as, as an entrepreneur and so on, there are still things that are outside of your comfort zone. And so, yeah, being coached on stage, maybe speaking more, doing the PR, you know, the fact that you now have the income, of course, means that you can invest in getting the right support for that. You can't do all the things all the time from the beginning. We have, as you said, time or money generally, and you're in the fortunate position now and you're choosing to invest the money. But I think that's a really interesting one. Again, we think that, oh, yes, I just need to do this one thing or now I'm going to build it around this thing that's comfortable, but that comfort zone changes, it evolves, and you will probably need to then whew, look at the next thing, right? But we can take it step by step and layer those things on rather than have to, I've got to do the podcast and the speaking and the ads and everything in one go. That can be impossible, will be impossible, in fact. Yeah, I mean, we're almost, I mean, I've been in business for six years now, and we're just now evolving into this. Mm. So, and everyone's journey looks different. Right. Yeah. And just coming around, because I know you said you had two little girls and they're similar yeah. age to mine. So I, I very much appreciate the <laughs> chaos around you. Um, yeah. I mean, how does that look? So you work two days a week. Are they the same days every week? How does that look like for us? Just to yeah. understand. So I, when my, so I have a three-year-old and an 18 month old, uh, two daughters. And the, when the three-year-old was born, we were just kind of like, we'll figure it out. And I kind of mostly did the nap time hustle thing, yeah. which Worked out really well until she went down to one nap a day. And I was like, okay, I can't work for only two hours and not always consistently. Um, So we now have a nanny who comes in two days a week. And I work Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are my days to work. And actually, the earlier this year, my husband also left corporate life. So he is now staying at home and with the girls and helping and kind of figuring out what he wants to do next too. But it's really good to have, for me personally, to have a schedule, right? Like I, Mm -hmm. Tuesdays and Thursdays are my days. 
We're recording this on a Monday. The only reason why I'm working on a Monday today is because Thanksgiving is coming up. We have a holiday, <laughs> right? So this Thursday I won't be working. So I'm working today instead. But uh, most every week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, that it that's that's it. Unless something you know pops up on the calendar, and thankfully, since now my husband is at home, we have the flexibility to do that mm. too. But I really do try to sit down eight to five. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Nice. And then again, yeah, the fact that you can talk, we always forget about Thanksgiving, sorry, because I've, oh, yeah. <laughs> we just don't have that. We just go straight from Halloween to, to Christmas, unfortunately. So we yeah. go straight through. But I think that's interesting because I work Mondays, Wednesdays and Thursdays. So yes. I'm glad that I didn't interfere with your schedule. But, you know, sometimes it's hard to get it if everyone's doing their own little schedule. Oh, yeah. It's quite hard to, to make things work. But then the, the flexibility of it is that you can make a choice. So I yes. have Thursdays as a sacred no meetings usually. Yeah. I'm working on my book or a course or something, yeah. you know, the business development piece or whatever. But of course, sometimes if it's a an important client and you need to get a call in or something like that, then you have the opportunity to choose intentionally mm-hmm. to to make that happen. Yeah. Um, but it, but it's I love that the two days a week and Tuesday and Thursday feels good because it's not not too long a break at any time. I suppose you get quite a long weekend, don't you, from Friday through to Monday. But since you've yeah. got the support team around you, I imagine that you still manage that. Yeah, we have a, I have an amazing team. We have Mm. four core people who they're all contractors, but they um, have worked with me, all of them for almost at least two years or more. So, you know, we've definitely figured out kind of our who's covering what, and we're have our lanes that we stick into. We trust each other. We're very good at communicating. We have one team meeting for an hour once a week. That's it. So, uh, yeah, we tr- we try to be as efficient as possible. And out of curiosity, because it's a question that comes up, what yeah. was your approach to hire those people? Do you go by an agency? Have you chosen local people? What's Ooh. been your approach? Great question. So no one is local. Uh, I started kind of like everyone. The very first hire was a VA. Uh, and I even hired her when I was still at my nine to five job. Mm. And I think when I first hired her, it was for like five hours mm-hmm. a month like something very extremely small, but it it dipped my toes. Great start. And she was the only contractor that I worked with for probably about two or three years. And then we kind of went through kind of a phase of like, we had a copywriter that worked with us. And then uh, right before my first was born, I had a OBM or an uh, online business manager reach out to me. And it was really interesting because we, I've been talking about, I need a project manager. Like I need to not be the one to make sure that everything is getting done. And she cold emailed me, which if you don't believe in cold emails, I'm just going to say you need to do it. (laughs) I, and I all, I mean, I believe like, number one, if you're needing something and you really want it, like the universe, God, mm-hmm. whoever you believe in is totally going to bring it to you. And that's honestly how the majority of our hires have happened. Uh, but I had been thinking about, I need a project manager, especially once our oldest is born, you know, is pregnant at the time. And she cold emailed me and she was like, Hey, Anna, my name's Carolyn. This is what I do, blah, 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 blah. And I said, you know, we're in the middle of a launch. Let's talk next month. We got on one Zoom call and I was like, this girl is it. Like, I need her on my team. Um, And Carolyn was, I can't, she was transitioning from her nine to five to her business. I was her very first client and in the online business space. Um, And now she's been with me for over three years. She literally runs my entire business basically on the back end. Um, and you know, we, again, went from like a few hours a month to where she is today. Uh, and then beyond that, she's helped with a lot of hiring too. So either most, a lot of it is through networking, um, word of mouth, you know, once you get into the space, you really realize how small it is. Mm. Uh, so people she's worked with, or I've worked with, but, it's never really been job postings or anything like that. You know, we found some people through Instagram, but it is, there's no like one specific way that we've done it. It's been kind of a variety of just figuring out who we need and Mm. uh, the skill sets that they bring. 
So. Nice. That's very helpful. It's interesting. I was a bit reluctant there to to um, blanket accept the efficiency of cold emails. And I think partly oh, yeah, it just no. gets such a bad <laughs> rap from the, the awful, like 99% of emails to me are just like, they have yeah. no idea who I am. They're completely irrelevant, spelling mistakes. So it's awful. Yeah. What I love in that story is, again, as inspiration for the audience, if they're just starting out, that person came across to you as someone very compelling. It came at the right time. You had a call with her. Clearly, she was competent. She convinced you that she was the right person. And yet, you were her first client. So in terms of, you know, hustling, I guess, a little bit and so on, if you can write something compelling, if you believe you have the expertise and you can walk the talk and then deliver, don't yeah. hold back just because you don't have the experience yet or you haven't yet. You know, that's that's an amazing example, I think. So it's a warning to those who are just kind of hey, hello, I can get you on the first page of Google. That's not the right approach, but (laughs) the tailored, you know, actually having looked at your business, oh, wow, she's at the kind of point in her business where she's successful, but she probably needs, you know, the support. And she obviously read that really well. Um, Anna Concha, it's been such a pleasure to hear about your business and and the lifestyle first approach, which I so value. So many common themes and, and such inspiring stories there as well where can we find you where is your podcast what's your website what's the best place to to find out about you yeah absolutely so my website is anna conchar that's k-o-n-c-h-a-r.com you can find all the things there from the podcast to the programs and things that i offer my podcast is called your million dollar side hustle and you can find it wherever you listen So, and of course I'm on Instagram, you know, I'm the millennial female over that only one staying out on Instagram. I feel like I still haven't dipped my toes in TikTok because I just can't go there yet. But I half-heartedly upload some videos now and then, which is not an effective strategy. So (laughs) so I'm very foolishly trying to dip my toes without having any results, of course. But, you know, it's good to stay on top of these things just in case, but not a strategic priority for now. Yeah. So you can find me on Instagram at Anna Conchar. Amazing. And we'll put the details so we'll have the spelling and everything, but that's fine. But lovely to speak to fellow Anna. Really great to hear your story and congratulations on your success. And here's to the next phase and to building your personal brand and and excited to hear and stay in touch with what's next for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. The Outside of Business Academy is a self-paced course for you to work through in your own time to learn and implement the foundations of building a profitable business that lets you escape the nine to five. So if you're full of great ideas, but lack the knowledge and experience to turn them into a viable business that will actually support your desired lifestyle, or you feel like you're doing all the right things and yet you're just not getting the traction and results that you're after, you have come to the right place. I'm here to help you design a profitable and enjoyable business that gives you freedom from the nine to five. Register for the Academy and get started learning today at onestepoutside.com forward slash course. That's onestepoutside.com forward slash course.